ton of things that people want to do with their phone device while they're out and about. They want to look up a phone number. They want to look up a uh, place to eat and so on. So here I am on my phone. Um, the phone recognizes that I'm in Redmond. And search tries to be contextual and decide based on your query whether it should give you a local result or a web result. Perfect. I typed pizza. I get a map. I get results for pizza that's near me. You can see there's that's a great. Pizza Hut 0.83 miles away. Um, if I want to get more information about this, I can touch it. Um, Bing is providing all this detail. I can see um, directions. I can get the phone number. I could jump to their website. I could pan over and read reviews. Excellent. You know, you've heard about Bing as a decision engine. The Bing team is aggregating together data from lots of different sources to help people make decisions. Restaurant reviews are a good example. Some of this great. data does comes from Yelp. Does it have similar Yelp. functionality for movies? It does, does actually. It knows where you are? Absolutely, it does. And one of the other nice things you can do is hit nearby, and it'll show you parking, ATMs, gas stations, things that are near the place that you just did a search on. In fact, you asked about movies, so let's try, a, let's try an example. Um, there are a bunch of data types that the Bing engine... I was going to say Avatar. The Bing engine <laughs> tries to be smart about. Movies are one example where it gives you an instant answer. Really prevent people from having to type a lot. When I type Avatar, it knows my location. That's great. And it tells me the actual theaters and times for me to go see Avatar right now. Yeah, so it knew you were talking about a movie. It could have very well brought up an Xbox Live Avatar page. That's right. For your, That's your, right. your, your it, gaming It figured icon. it out. That's and here's, right. here's another interesting example. Smart. You see, in this case, it picked web by default but it could have picked local. Uh -huh. I don't know if there's any local businesses near here called Avatar. Look, there are. If I pivot over to local, there they are, <laughs> and I can find my way on the map and so on. So that's search. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about communications. Um, I mentioned email. There's a very full, complete implementation. But what I can do is jump to email, and you'll see here, um, this is an Exchange email account. We support Exchange, but also Hotmail, Windows Live, Gmail, mm -hmm. Yahoo, all the popular mail formats, and it's really easy to set up. I can pivot between messages and look at just my unread. I can look at messages that I have flagged. I can look at messages that are urgent. Uh, but in general, the performance is really good, and our implementation of ActiveSync works against a local cache, so it's always very responsive. Mm -hmm. You can delete messages, you can open messages, and you never see an annoying loading, loading, loading. This is, the, this is your inbox, and okay. I was looking at all mail, and what I'm using is this strip across the top for pivoting. Very clear. It's a way to filter, so that's all unread flags. And and urgent mail. And you'll see this UI metaphor is used throughout the application experiences on the phone. The same idea happens in Zune, same idea happens in Calendar and so on. So can you use the, the hardware search button within Exchange as well? You can. If you push search while you're in email, yep. it brings up the same box and lets you filter so you can find email Great. by sender or subject or whatever. Great. Let's flip over here. Um, I'll give you another sort of communications example. I'll jump into text. We support SMS and MMS messaging. So yep. if I wanted to embed a photo in this, conversation, I could. Um, someone sends me a photo, it'll show up. And I think you asked me about whether the devices would have keyboards. Yeah, well, some will. I like a keyboard. And one of the key scenarios for slide-out keyboard, slide keyboards is being able to do texting. So you'll see there when I rotate, we detect yeah. the rotation. Your text conversation reflows. Um, and you can do it in either vertical orientation or horizontal. And watch these two little buttons over here. And these are not finished. It's still sort of developer art. But when I rotate it, Watch how the word and the oh, icon that's changes. Oh, cute! Yeah, we're trying to pay attention to those <laughs> details and really make sure the user experience stays delightful and fun for oh, people. Rotation. Um, let's take a look at the calendar. Um, sort of another productivity uh, sort of example. You're um, a busy guy. Uh, yeah, I put a lot of stuff on here, and you see the red and the blue. Mm -hmm. A big theme for us is enabling the phone to work both for your work life and for your personal life. So like an email, we support your Gmail, Yahoo, mm -hmm. Hotmail, or Exchange account. Same is true in calendar. I can have a personal calendar merged with my Exchange calendar. And here in the, the day view, you see a different color for each of those. I can switch over to agenda view, where I get the, these items in a list. Or I can use down here on the app bar, uh, I'll touch the month uh, command, which shows oh, wow. me the calendar in a month orientation. So if I want to jump out to February 28th and see what's going on, I can do that. Very cool. Um, and you might have noticed, again, the pivots at the top and down at the bottom. We call this the app bar. Um, it's like a fancy toolbar designed for the phone, where the most common commands go on the top, so it's easy for people to learn. But you can always touch it or pull it up to find out 
enhanced commands. Mm -hmm. um, so that saves people from having to hunt and look all over the different parts of the UI to find their commands. Now, how is this syncing with your Outlook calendar? Are you still using ActiveSync? We use the ActiveSync protocol. Sync happens in the background. Mm -hmm. It's push notification. So the phone uh, automatically will stay up to date with any changes in your contacts, your calendar, right. your email. For multiple uh, providers, and more and more of them are starting to use Exchange ActiveSync. So it's a really a great way to stay very up to date. OK, we'll come back here to the Start menu. Um, now, is this customizable? I know you, you showed me how you could move the tiles around. What about colors or shapes? Um, actually, you can. Uh, the, the blue color that you're seeing here is called the accent color. Okay. And you can specify that as an end user. And the other thing that you can change, you might have noticed the email was black text on a white background. Mm -hmm. We're implementing both light on dark as well as dark on light. Some of the devices that we'll ship will have OLED displays that are better with a black background. Yep. Um, they look really crisp and sharp, and it saves battery life. Some of them will have LCDs. At the end of the day, if you buy the phone, you get to pick the color scheme. That's what I like. Yeah. Um, so let's scroll down and take a look at uh, some of the more fun sort of feature areas. Okay. We'll start with pictures.